We're ready to We're start. Live, yep. Okay, I guess we'll call this meeting to order. Uh, would everyone stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of Allegiance to, to the flag, flag of the United States, States of America, America and, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. all. <clears throat> Okay, tonight is May, but uh, today is May 12th. Uh, we're here for a Board of Appeals hearing. Uh, starting at 6.30, I guess it's pretty close. The agenda for tonight, because when most of us are new here to the board, uh, we thought the thing to do is to in introduce, each other, in introduce ourselves so that everyone would be aware of who we are. I don't even know. I think we have some nameplates. We'll start over here. My name is Ashton Cotton. I'm a 25 year resident of Berwick. And uh, like, as he just stated, I'm new to the board and I look forward to helping adjudicate some of our town's residence issues in the future here. I'm um, Russell Ingalls and I guess I'm 37 years here in Berwick now. Um, and I live out in the, in the sticks right close to Lebanon, and uh, I, I kind of like it out there in, in the Willy Wags. My name is Ernie Wood. I'm a retired educator and administrator of schools. Um, I have an interest in public service. I did uh, was also a member of the planning board of South Brook when I lived in South Brook. I'm glad to be here, thank you. I'm Pat Bovere. I've been on the board a couple of years now. Um, um, I did a lot of work with Envision Berwick, and um, I've lived here for 48 years. <laughs> okay, the first order of business is, uh, at this point in time, we don't have a chair. Uh, so I'd like to take nominations for a chair for the board. I'd like to move that Rick Engels be the chair of this committee. I second that. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. I guess I am now the chair of the Board of Selectmen. <laughs> I mean, of the Board of, Sele of, the, uh, <laughs> uh, Board of Appeals. And I think probably now we ought to have a vice chair. Um, is there some? You guys just froze. Good, I thought it was us. Nope, you froze. <laughs> well, why don't we move We're back for Ernie to be, it seems like you've got quite a lot of experience in some boards, so uh, I'm going to move for Ernie to be the uh, vice chair. Second? Second. Further discussion? All those in favor? Mm -hmm. Okay, so our first <laughs> order of business was to select a chair and a vice chair for this board, which we've accomplished. The second order of business tonight is a public hearing. Uh, the public hearings on a appeal on an home occupancy permit on 68 Ridland Road. Uh, not having been a chair on this appeals board, uh, we're gonna probably defer at times to the town attorney to make sure that we do this properly and make sure that we have crossed all our T's and, and done it properly. Uh, maybe after the first one, I won't have to request so much assistance, but uh, we don't, certainly don't want to do this improperly. I believe um, I'm going to try to work my way through this so I get more comfortable with it. In is, the, is the person here, is the town attorney here? Yes, he's, he's, up, he's uh, you know, on the uh, camera. Oh, okay. All right. So um, in the Board of Appeals, uh, in the uh, town ordinance, 
there's a, a section uh, 10 that pretty much gives us the governing guidance for um, holding hearings. And on page 121, pretty much it, it states that the appellant's case shall be heard first, and then we will go to uh, anyone else that has any part in the uh, discussion, followed by the town having uh, its chance to uh, explain what went on. We'll open up any questions to the public following that um, in a timely manner. We're not going to, I don't want to have it dwell out if there's something important for someone to say. I think the board wants to hear it. We're here to try to understand what the issue is and try to make sure that uh, it's all resolved in accordance with the uh, guidance that we have here in the town ordinance. So uh, if the attorney, did I miss anything, Phil? Uh, no, you didn't. Uh, this is Phil Sauce here from Bernstein Insure, and I'm, our firm represents the town. Um, you did. Uh, that was a good summary. That's and that's the way I'd recommend it. Um, and your ordinance suggests that uh, that's the way it should go, which is essentially the uh, the appellants, the people who brought the case, go first, and they they make their arguments on why the permit was issued in error. I would then hear from um, from the permit holders. Um, you could have the CEO, CEO go, go or the permit holders, but uh, would have the permit holders go next. Um, and then they make their case. And then also the CEO on behalf of the town and why they decided a certain way. I would then let the public speak, as you suggested. The public has an opportunity to comment on the appeal. And then I would um, close the public portion and deliberate on the merits of the appeal. And um, I had a question before um, this. And it's I wrote a letter just sort of summarizing the procedure. And on your ordinance, um, you, you review administrative appeals on what's called the de novo basis. That's the default way of reviewing under state law. Um, and what that means is um, for the issues that are actually appealed, so the extent that they're issues under the home occupation permit that are appealed, you're going to hear those issues afresh, meaning you're going to make your own independent determination on those particular issues, um, regardless of what the CEO determined. And I'm, I'll be here to help you if you have any questions about that once you get to that stage of the, the appeal. Okay, thank you. Uh, I have a question. When does the board get to ask questions? We can ask questions as they go. We'll let um, whoever's speaking have their chance to mm -hmm make that presentation and if we have any questions as the process goes on i'd like to answer ask them then and not call them back up so that it's fresh in our mind okay so a as each uh, party gets up we can uh, we'll have our questions mm -hmm. so we can uh, get a better understanding of what the issue is okay um, is it stefano's is that right okay um i believe we have a letter from you and uh, we've read it over and i guess if you'd like to come up uh, to the podium and uh, state what your concerns are so that we can understand. So our concerns is um, the unwanted traffic that has come in all hours of the night. Um, also that the deed for the property says that there are supposed to be no mobile homes, residential trailers, metal storage buildings, which there are, uh, storage containers shall be permitted on lot in said subdivision. Um, and the subdivision shall be used solely for single family residential purposes. Home occupations as allowed under applicable municipal ordinances are permitted. So they're saying that it's a home occupation building for medical marijuana is allowed in the R3 zoning, which we are, only on properties which have frontage on Route 9 and Route 4, which is not Ridland Road. And, and our other concern is safety. Like, there, this is a neighborhood full of Hundreds of kids. Um, where, where, how is this stuff being stored? Is it being accessed outside? Um, and the waste. I mean, they do everything from seed to sale, their business. How, if you're extracting, you're using butane, which then turns it into an industrial 
occupation. Where's all the waste from that going? Down the road into our, into our driveway. To our well. There's also cars from all out of state. So if it's a home marijuana business, I don't understand why New York, Connecticut, Rhode Island, or Massachusetts needs to be frequenting this business. So this was also checked off that um, they are in full compliance for the caregiver operating under the home occupation. And this is the checkoff. Um, there should be, the home occupation shall be carried on by residents of the dwelling unit. There is someone that shows up eight to four every day to work. Home occupations may not alter the residential character of the structure, which there's a huge extension off the front of their existing home. Industrial looking building. It says one non-illuminating sign, no larger than four square feet, which is not, there's no sign on the premises. So how, I don't understand how they're in compliance with all of that. You want your business, that's fine. I have nothing against your business, but put it where it belongs, on Route 4 or Route 9, not on Bridland Road. Yes. Do you want me to speak or do you want me to wait and just take notes? Yeah, just take notes for now. Can, can I also say something? When this all started, it first started out as a garage. Yet there were no garage no, doors. No. Nope, nope, no, sir. No. Yep. Sir. You'll have your chance. So, okay. so which residential for a family member, and now it's morphed into this. Why back door? Why wasn't there transparency? Why isn't there transparency when this business was set up? A man around the neighborhood built a metal garage. He went around and asked all the neighbors. That's called courtesy. And this also says a um, for the building permit is going to be a extension to the existing garage with a rooftop deck, which is not there. I just, I, I don't like the, I have four kids, aging from 11 to four. I don't feel like this is appropriate in a residential neighborhood, which it also says in the deed for that property should be solely for single family residential purposes, not businesses in a residential R3 zoning. And I don't appreciate being screamed at from the rooftop deck By profanities when I have my child in my presence. By the business owner. And if you want the initials, it's see you next Tuesday is what she called my daughter-in-law in front of my four-year-old grandson. This is your business owner who's supposed to be bringing improvements to the town of Burke. I don't see it. Well, what we're going to have to deal with is and come to some understanding is whether this occupancy is allowed mm -hmm. in the town. It, the town does allow home occupancy permits across the town in various sections for different things. If they meet the requirements of a home occupancy permit, which maybe that's where we go once we get to the discussion and decide where, how we get, uh, you know, come to some resolution on this, that's we, we've got, I guess we've got to decide or we've got to come to some understanding of what was allowed, what is allowed, and then we can go from there. Um, so I think we've heard some of your uh, concerns. Is there any questions on anything that they've said so far? Uh, I would but, like, do I ask through you or? That's fine. You, you've, uh, you're okay. Right um, when you say there are is traffic all hours of the night, what what do you mean by that? So their business operating hours say from two to nine, according to their website. We've seen traffic ten, eleven, twelve. Pull in ten minutes gone. Not even ten minutes. The other night they had a flashlight to have the person direct them where to come.
which, so basically you're arguing that this permit never should have been issued. Is that true? You don't, yes. You don't believe that they meet the rules to have a home occupancy in the first place, that they should be on Route 9? For this particular so business this that they have. That, that's. I have nothing against your business. Nothing against your business. If that's what you choose to do, but put it where it belongs. It does not belong on Ridland Road. Because it says right here, you can have a home occupancy business in R3 zoning, which is what we are on Ridland Road. But if you have a medical marijuana, it needs to have frontage on Route 4 and Route 9. Not Ridland Road. So we have the, the use on Ridland Road. You have an issue with the traffic. Um, what other, and the worker? You say that there's, the there's a worker that's working there? Which is not, if you do a home occupation, it's supposed to be just the residents of the home. Right. I would like to know about the traffic and, um, you know, what, what's, what's the usual traffic in the subdivision and what now is the increased traffic? So there used to be a lot of traffic because we had a bridge that went to a pond. Um, that bridge is now closed. But I have people that are passing their driveway turning around in my yard. I have four kids. I don't, I don't want people unwanted traffic turning around in my yard. And you were talking about, um, I think, increased traffic. Um, so do you see more traffic or? If your hours of operation are from two to nine, mm -hmm. that's when kids are getting off the bus and you get unknown vehicles from Massachusetts and New York. I mean, when your kids are getting off the bus. Mm -hmm. Again, I'm asking how much traffic is there. <laughs> um, I, I mean, I'm not going to sit in the window and count the cars that pull <laughs> <No>. in. <laughs> no. Um, I've seen on average maybe 10 cars per day, mm -hmm. which I understand meets the less than 20. I get that. I ask a question? Absolutely. Uh, have you had any occasion in your concern for traffic to call the police as a result of something that you saw or occurred as part of this? No. So Not been... yet, but they're supposedly just up and running, so I don't... Give it time. Yes, sorry. There are police reports on this subject to answer your question. Yes, there are. Do you have anything further you would like to mention um, at this time? I'm a registered nurse for 42 years. This has its place. I agree there's a place for medical marijuana, but it doesn't belong in a neighborhood full of kids. What's the safety gap that nothing is going to come out of that house and make it to kids in the neighborhood? Where's the safety? I mean, it's all been backdoored. It hasn't been transparent. I'm not feeling really good about it being over there, especially when I see all these out-of-state vehicles. When all these states have the ability to get it in their own state, you're coming all the way to Maine to get her brownies and her, her products from New York. <clears throat> Connecticut, Rhode Island, that's a stretch. Yeah. I had a home-based business. I went around to every neighbor that I abutted and talked to them before I opened it. It's called business courtesy. And I, I do, made sure it didn't impact any of them. And I do understand that. It's going to be rather the 
ordinance allows it or not. I mean, we, we, we can hear concerns like that, but ultimately it's what the wording in this, this ordinance allows and doesn't allow in the area that we're in. So that's what I believe this board is going to have to discuss and debate after we've heard, you know, everybody's concerns. That's we're going to have to decide where we go from there. Does that do you understand mm -hmm. where we're coming from there? No, oh, I do. I do. So if the board has no further questions at this time, I mean, we certainly if we have things come up over the course of this hearing and we need to uh, have you come back up, we'll certainly ask you to stand back up and uh, uh, answer any questions that we may have, because I probably expect that as it goes along, things will more come to light and we'll maybe need some, some additional information. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I believe it's the Roy's, is that right? Yep. yep. Uh, is there someone who wants to speak? Good evening, Chair Ingalls and Vice Chair Wood and the rest of the board, Wood Enforcement. Uh, I'm Jill Polster. I'm managing partner at Cohen Law, Maine. I'm here tonight representing Jessica Roy. Her husband is here, Matthew Roy. Um, my law firm specializes in representing medical marijuana caregivers and other marijuana businesses, so this is all I do. Um, so I appreciate the opportunity to be heard tonight. I submitted a letter in advance. I think you all probably have it in the packet. That. Thank you. Um, and I just want to touch on a few things from my letter and then respond to the appellant, some of the issues raised by the appellants. As I indicated in our letter, a municipality cannot prohibit or limit the number of medical marijuana caregivers. That is state law. Furthermore, local authorization is not required for a home-based caregiver. So Berwick has put in place an ordinance that does require a home occupation permit. Berwick's land use ordinance 8.25.2 provides that as an accessory use, medical marijuana caregivers shall be permitted as a home occupation business in any medical marijuana caregivers primary year-round residence in every base zone and overlay zone. So they're allowed to be medical marijuana caregivers. My, I understand there's concern about transparency in the process. What I've been told by the town, by my clients, is this process has gone on for a year or more that the appellants have been heard on numerous occasions, that they were well aware of the permits that have been applied for both for construction and for the home occupation. Construction is still underway at 68 Ridland Road. So the plan for the building that's been put on the front, it will have a rooftop deck when it's completed. It will be fully landscaped. I was over there before this meeting. Um, it blends with the house. If you did not know, you wouldn't know. Um, and that project has been permitted by Berwick, and that is a public process that they were aware of as it was going on. The land use, your land use ordinance sets forth performance standards for a home occupation business. The appellants have raised one issue out of the nine performance standards, and tonight they've already conceded that they are in compliance on that issue, and that would be traffic. So the performance standard is no more than 20 trips per day and so that's really 10 trips when you're coming and going the appellants have already conceded that they don't see more than that amount of cars the reason there are cars from other locations is obviously this is a vacation destination and main caregivers are allowed to serve patients from other states there is a list of approved states that's available on the Office of Marijuana Policy website. It is an authorized caregiver activity to sell to patients from out of state who have valid um, medical cards from their issuing state and photo ID. So to me, it is not unusual that um, a place as beautiful as Berwick, Maine would certainly have a lot of visitors and some of them bring their medical cards with them. So I don't think people are driving up from New York to shop at 68 Ridland Road. Um, I want to touch on a few others. Actually, on the website and on Weed Maps, where this business is listed, it does appear to make the business look like more than it is. That's marketing. The business is Jessica Roy and her husband, and he, um, so far, has not been allowed to have a home occupation permit to be a caregiver, even though he's well within his rights to ask for one. 
they were told only one would issue for this property. Mm -hmm. That's a separate issue, I think. Um, but Jessica has been issued a home occupation permit. They do not have cultivation up and running at that site at this time. So there's been no wastewater. I mean, they're just still under construction. They do not engage in butane extraction. I'm not sure where that came from. So there is no um, inherently hazardous extraction occurring on the property. It's solely a cultivation operation for one caregiver. So the maximum she can do at that site would be either 30 plants, and this would be flowering plants, or she could pay for extra plants, but it still has to be within 500 square feet. So there are sort of built-in limits for a, um, a medical marijuana caregiver, and then you layer on your performance standards. So she's compliant with Office of Marijuana Policy, she's compliant with state law, and today she, and every day, is compliant with Berwick's land use ordinance. The operating hours, actually, it's listed that the operation is closed because it's by appointment only. And that's what a patient would see if they look up Stash Inc. online, that it is closed all the time, that you have to call and make an appointment. The 2 o'clock to 9 o'clock hours referenced by the appellant relate to the delivery service that is, that is offered by Stash Inc. They don't do a lot of delivery because it's really only the two of them, but delivery is allowed for medical caregivers. Um, the, they keep referring to an employee. Employees of caregivers have to be registered with the state as caregiver assistants. Jessica has zero caregiver assistants. The person they're referring to is her sister, who does come by probably every day and hangs out all day and keeps her sister company. That's her sister. She helps take care of my child and we go canning every day. So that's just part of their normal day to day. Um, I definitely understand the concern about safety, of course. That's everyone's primary concern when, when it comes to marijuana businesses. But they do operate by appointment only. They verify people's photo ID and their valid medical card before they even set up an appointment. Those appointments are only during normal business hours and there are significantly less than 10 of those a day. I can address the late night. I take off. You need to stand up. Okay. Yeah, I'm just going to state oh, your sorry. name. <laughs> no, my name is Matthew Roy. I'm one of the residents. I just want to let you know uh, like the, the traffic I take off, I work at night, I work, I also have one a construction business, um, which I don't operate out of that location. So if I take off at four in the morning, or if I take off at 12 o'clock at night, that's for me to take off. Or if one of my employees comes to pick me up for construction, that, that has nothing to do with my wife's business. Thank you. I do think it's unfortunate that the neighbors haven't spoken to each other. I don't, I'm just in this now. So I haven't been in it the whole year plus that this process has been working its way through the town. Um, you know, I, I certainly think that better communication would help this situation because there's certainly a high level of misunderstanding about the operations that are occurring at 68 Ridland Road. Um, their allegations being made by the appellant of bad behavior. I'm not going to air dirty laundry in public like this, but we could certainly have a list of bad behavior coming from the other direction. Just don't think that's appropriate in this forum. And we're not trying to call people out like that. We're here, you know, for a very narrow inquiry, which is whether this home occupation permit was rightfully issued to Jessica Roy. We say that it was. She's in compliance it's with state law. She's in compliance with local ordinance. The business is barely even up and running. There's no cultivation on site at this time. There is definitely no inherently hazardous substances being used for extraction and no plan ever to do that. One of my bigger concerns for them is their caregiver status under state law is confidential. Through Berwick's process, it has certainly been paraded out. We're on YouTube now. Everybody knows this <laughs> would contribute to the unsafe, if there were an unsafe condition, the trotting out of this in public, mm -hmm. I have a real problem with. Because yeah. under state law, they're entitled to confidentiality and that has been blown wide open. 
we are now broadcasting to I don't know how many people. And again, that's an issue for another day as far as Berwick's process, because their confidentiality should be ensured even through the process of applying a, for a home occupation permit. They're not operating in a commercial zone. And there's a difference in how you regulate caregivers who operate at home and how you regulate caregivers who've taken a lease in a commercial zone or bought a building in a commercial zone. Because certainly operating in a commercial zone is very different than a home occupation in your house. So of course they have concerns, I have concerns for them that this has now all repeatedly been aired in a public forum. They just got this permit the first week of March. And now here we are 30 days later with complaints and they're not even really up and running. So we would ask that you leave the permit in place. It was properly issued. They are compliant and hopefully things will get better on Ridland Road going forward. Thank you. I don't know what you guys want to say after waiting out. You guys froze again. Okay, hey, just a second. Hi, I am Jessica Roy. I am the owner of 68 Ridlawn Road. I'm also the owner of Stash. Um, I would like an opportunity to answer every question that the opposers have brought forth. So, um, do we have a list of, I mean, she brought forth. Okay. Yeah, I think that's where it's going to come. It's all kind of coming at us at once right now. I mean, we. I. I'll speak for myself. I've read all the material, and now I'm listening and trying to formulate it and put it all it together. And and as we, I believe, start the discussion phase, we, it may be to the point where I hope we can open up the discussion, mm -hmm. uh, open up for questions that we may have, you know, in the discussion phase. Again, I'm not familiar entirely with the process, but. Uh, um, uh, right now, we're just trying to gather information, and then um, mm -hmm. we'll go through trying to figure out where we head from here. Uh, does the board have any questions right now? Is this where I would ask questions about um, the letter that they wrote? I would think this would be fine. Okay. Um, I would like to quote some things that you wrote in your letter. Can you hear? Not very well. Who, who you, are you? If you're addressing someone, they probably should come up to the podium. Uh huh. Um, Kelly, do that because people at home don't have any clue what's going on behind her, so she's going to talk to you if you want to. Okay. Can you hear me now? <laughs> Can you hear me now? Not really. It's just no. I I want to be heard. Not on for here. It's the it's mic's not on TV. So they can't, you're not like pronouncing to her right now. You're just gonna speak. Oh, I, this isn't on. If you just take a speak up. That's for home. Okay, here it goes. There you go. <laughs> so in the letter that you wrote to um, these two, James and Jen, the. Last year, by the way, last year. No, no date on the letter. Um, you wrote, we will not be needing any additional parking spaces because no one will be coming to our home. There will be no new deliveries to the house from any heavy trucks. Um, the only heavy trucks that access our residence are FedEx, UPS, and US mail mm -hmm. and trash. Um, the traffic we receive is family or friends. We have no intentions of people coming to our home for our occupation. No. You froze again. We cannot hear you. Hey, Candy, we can hear you. It's it's them, not us. It's what? Yeah, oh, there we go. It's what? When, when you, Pat, when you were speaking, you froze again, so we couldn't hear everything that you were seeing or saying. I'm sorry. You just go back a minute. How far back do I go? About a minute. Just 
Uh, just so you were talking about how there would be only family and friends at the house and there would be no unwanted traffic and no large um, trucks. trucks. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Just a second. I'm going to, again, not familiar. Um, are we supposed to stop when we hear that something's frozen? I mean, this I is getting... I would pause until they figure it out and they... Can you. Okay. Because yeah. that means our town attorney can't hear either. So. Okay. 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 Um, so we have no intentions of people coming to our home for our occupation. We are not putting up any signs on or near our home or property regarding our new occupation. We do not advertise that our occupation is a pickup location, nor would we for safety. We have spoken to other services in the area with similar occupations and have figured that vehicle trips per day may be closer to half the 20 trips currently allowed by the ordinance. Okay, for me, this is very confusing mm -hmm. because in this letter, you're saying people are not going to be coming to do any kind of pickup is that correct? Absolutely, ma'am. And if you'll look at the date on it, it says December 31st, 2018. And since then, I've had so many roadblocks that yes, my business plan has in fact changed, but it has not changed very much. In fact, I'm actually, I actually have less traffic right now than I did previously because I am now by appointment. Previously, I'd come closer to this number because of the amount of times that I would come home go to the office, answer my clients, pack up, and deliver directly to them. It was very difficult for me at that time to continue to run that way. Since then, I've had many, many different roadblocks. When I started off this business, it's all been out of my pocket. I have had so many roadblocks, close to 17 months worth of roadblocks. In that 17 months of time, I have still had to provide for my family. I've still had to make things work. That did include me changing and making it so that I have a small office within my new addition where people can come and talk to me, can visit with a registered nurse if they need to, can get the things that they need. The traffic is far below by appointment only than it was when I was through delivery. The amount of traffic that I have, I count in my husband's business, which is a construction business. We allocate time for my sister to come daily who just moved out. We allocate time for groceries. I have three children, 14 to age four. We take part in everything within the community. I've been a Boy Scout leader. I've been a substitute teacher. I have taught sports. I have never ever once thought, you know, that what I do to help people is in the wrong location or that I am wrong for doing what I do. I've made sure that I've crossed every, I, I, I've bent, I've, I've done everything. I've even let the neighbors know the reason why I run this business because my husband is very, very ill and I can't continue to run a construction company. I need to know how to provide for my family so that things don't change for my children. That's why I do what I do. Not because I am a glorified drug dealer, not because I'm doing anything wrong in the community, but I'm made to feel that way on a daily basis. Well, I feel then like this letter then is is not just, just a second. I, I feel like this letter then is not at all up to date, and exactly. I really feel and if like you would ask me for a new one. I would. I, be happy I would. I would like to have a new one because I think it's important that we know exactly what what because it was so confusing for me to hear. Um, no people are coming. Um, no one. Um, no one's coming for pickups, and yet you have directions on the website how how to get to your house. So, um, you know, the things that they just, one thing that's didn't say the other. map through weed maps. I don't ever list that it's 68 Ridlon Road. 
that's and when people come it's actually very difficult <laughs> because of where we are. Um, Weed Map sends them all around through Hubbard and they can't cross now. It's actually a, a big issue for my patients. Yes, uh, well, I just feel like the information that we have here is not particularly I would love to, to have seen you back in like even January of 2019 and then maybe this would have been much more relevant. And, and I think, I'm gonna interrupt Pat for just a second. I think we're gonna have the chance for the code officer to speak because the permit just got signed or very recently got signed so I'm, I'm assuming that they have up-to-date information based on the traffic that's mm -hmm. probably more accurate than that letter as well so if, if we do need a new letter we can I think once we talk to the code officer and get you know their basis behind the permit and whatnot and where their justification for the trips were it may clarify Absolutely. some of that as well Absolutely. okay okay I also noticed in this letter you make reference to Stone Age Stoneworks and that they're they're a liquidated business at this time yes and I was wondering what that I was wondering um, that was a home occupation also so my husband and I have been construction owners for the past 20 what two years now um, never once did I have to ask my neighbors if I was a construction owner though um, ma'am address me please so yes I have been a construction owner um, my husband has been has owned Stone Age Stoneworks, and yes, that business is being liquidated because of his health. And what, how, how did you use your home business in that situation, your home occupation business? How did I use it? As yeah. an office to pay bills. It's a construction business. So my husband is the so largest you had, It was an office in where you paid bills and... Yeah, yeah. exactly. So We've never seen anybody. Nobody ever comes over. Mm -hmm. It's just... If I would have anybody, it would be our employees that would be picking up their paycheck at the time or building my beautiful retaining walls around the property, um, that sort of thing. Okay. And I'm assuming you had a office team permit for that as well. Yes. Okay. okay. Yes, Ernie. Uh, <clears throat> I'd like to ask you the question, as you probably know, home occupancy with regard to an occupation is saying to me anyway it is saying that it's for the residents only who are doing the work mm -hmm. and so my question to you do you have uh an employee that does not live no sir on the residence not. in the residence i need to have them registered with the state yeah I'm, I'm a, i have to very okay i hear you because i have a hard time too so I do not have anybody other than my husband that is actually registered and legal. He is my only helper that I okay. have. Technically, when you're a married couple, you need to be each other's helpers. I'm not exactly sure why, but it, it's what we have to do. Um, I do not have, and I cannot afford right now, anyone to you know come and be an employee. I really wish I could. I've waited this last year working really hard and I would love to be able to, you know, have something like that. But I do not have anybody that works for me. What about when not you have the registered nurse come? What's that? What about when you have the registered No, you just froze again. Sarah's got that pretty good, though. And we're back. We're back. Okay, Pat. Um, so what is, what about the registered nurse that comes? Is Do you pay her? Is she an employee? To... No. No. I don't. The only person that pays a registered nurse is a patient of the registered nurse. It has nothing to do with me. All I do is provide the medicine in which they need. I don't provide the license. I don't give the yay or nays. I am just there to say, I can help you, and this is a great person that can do that for you. You can talk with this person, and you can get a medical card with them if you so choose. It's not a payment that goes to me. It's nothing I collect. It's nothing that I pay for. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Does she have office hours there, though? No, and as a matter of fact, we haven't had one come yet. We have a relationship with somebody that, um, 
our patients or people that are not patients yet are able to actually get on their phone and do it via web because of this entire COVID thing. It's not a good idea to have close contact and more than one people person in the building with me. So what we do is there is a web address. They put it right into their phone and the registered nurse gets on and she makes an appointment virtually with you over your phone. It costs my patients $49 there's an ID and that's it. It has nothing to do with me other than the fact that I need my patients to have an ID in order to serve them. And I, my I, patients can come from all I, states. I think it's, from my understanding of the ordinance, it's gonna get down to how much a home occupancy allows you to do in the location you're in. And it, it pretty clearly states that it has to be only residents of the home that are doing anything there. So we start talking about having nurses there with our, I'm not saying you are or you're not, I'm just saying then we're starting to move this into a bigger business where I believe that's where there's gonna be some concern. Yes. Um, I haven't had anybody there for that yet. I, I, I it's not understand. I'm just, yeah, I, I won't I'm just, and I'll do it online and they can take care of it that way if right. that is ever an issue. Right. I'm just do saying, have a nice setting for people if they do need it. Again, we, we get back to what are the words that in front of us say. We can only interpret the words that are here and try to apply it to what you're telling us to see if it fits within the guidelines that we have to say this is acceptable or not. And that's why I'm kind of clarifying yeah. that. I have, uh, I have another question. Um, on your website, you call yourself um, a dis um, a dispensary. A dispensary? Mm -hmm. a, a cannabis dispensary. Can I see where it's worded or is it just listed that way under no, maps? No, it's on your website. Okay. And so I wondered, are you a registered dispensary? I'm a registered caregiver. A caregiver. I'm a caregiver with a caregiver office. Okay. And I well, dispense medical marijuana in all forms. Okay, so you're, I think the registered dispensary is like 2425A, do you know, I, I just, I, I don't, so you aren't a registered dispensary. I'm a registered caregiver. Okay. A registered dispensary is a whole different thing. Sorry, well, to the microphone. Sorry. Um, She's not a registered dispensary. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not looking at what you're looking at, so I can't specifically well, um, respond. Yeah, I, I, I um, can't get, you know, we need to be looking at what she's advertising. It definitely says that they're a dispensary. It says it more than once. Um, again, I'm not, like, if that's No, advice, on your website. Yeah, I, I can't respond on their behalf because I'm not looking at what you're looking at. So yeah, so I'm I'm just concerned because then that's what I was saying. If she's a if she's a dispensary, then she falls into a different category, and and if you're not a dispensary, then you're misleading people. <laughs> she's well, most definitely not a dispensary. That's a very different license. Um, what I'm looking at on the website says main medical marijuana caregivers, cultivators, extractors. And well, I, I can't, I'm not going to look on my phone for it right now, okay? But I didn't imagine it. All right, so um, anyway, <clears throat> just, just check it out because if you're not one of these, if you're not a dispensary, then please fix that because it's misleading. And, and you can later... <laughs> Well, yeah, I'll just. I would be happy to. I yeah. actually have Brown yeah. Square Media who takes care of my website for me. Uh -huh. uh, I don't see it on the About Me page as we're scrolling through it right now. And that's all the only blurbs there are about me if anybody wants to take a look at that. Um, but if you do see that mm -hmm. word, I'd be happy to remove that. Yeah. yeah. I think we're. And we'll, we'll check seven. weed maps we'll, as well. We'll, we'll follow up on that. But of course, if it says that, we'll correct it because she's definitely not a good I have a question for her. Ernie. Um, Can you come back up to the microphone? Me? Oh, I didn't yes. talk to you. Yeah, yeah, sorry. My question to you is that in my reading um, that you applied for a building of a two-car garage. Is that correct? Sorry, Did I was pulling. for a permit for a two-car garage? I p applied for an extension off of 
my garage. Okay. Again, I, I apologize. It's I okay. forgot my hearing So aids. when I applied, I didn't say I was making a bigger garage. I, I said I was making an extension off of my garage. An like so that you knew in the direction of which okay. and the build was going. So that's so the, the 60 by 25 structure is used for what? Sorry, sir. What? We, we were still working on responding to Ms. Robert, and we did find one the, occurrence of the word dispensary that needs to be removed on weed maps. One occurrence. Yeah. So somebody else wrote that for her. She'll take care of that. Could you uh, please repeat your question? Yeah, I, you know, I, again. He's just interested in knowing what, what the, building the building was ex designed for. <coughs> Is that right, Ernie? Yeah. yeah. Can I clarify that, please? Come up. When I first, uh, my name is Matt Roy, owner of the building. When I first applied, we wanted an extension off the building because we always wanted a rooftop um, deck coming off our master bedroom. Plus, I needed storage. We got a lot of stuff. We did. We were growing our medical marijuana down in the basement in tents. When we started building, we were bringing in the electricity. We were supposed to bring in 400 amps. My electrician was like, hey, you know, it's not really safe what you're doing in the basement while we bring in more electricity. So we brought in more electricity mm -hmm. and then I found out I was sick and then we decided to go the route with, that we, we were going to provide my wife with an income, so be it. Um, the reference letter that you are uh, reading was a letter that was declined by Jen. So that is null and void. That was a business plan that we had when I first applied for a home occupation. She denied it because I still had my construction business at the time. That's correct. That's correct. And she also denied it because she also told me at the time in Berwick, Caregivers did not need home occupancy. Uh, occupancy, uh, occupancy uh, sorry. Occupancy. Occupancy. <laughs> so at that point, we took that back. So everything on that is null and void. Since then, we've had to buy. We've had to re-alter everything we were going to do. It wasn't fair for us to meet people in the Cumberland parking lot and be imposing on their business. We made it so that out-of-state patients who were coming in had a safe environment. They felt welcome. We, fought, we made, an, uh, we made a, uh, an office in part of that building. So as of right now, that's what, what we're doing with the building. There's so an empty room. room. And, there's and an empty there's room. There's an empty room. Huge empty room. The it growing is still in the basement? We no. actually stopped We stopped growing, growing, stopped when, growing. When, we, when, we for, when we applied to do all this. Mm -hmm. We stopped growing. We haven't grown since. We grew outside last year. And nobody said a word about the stink. There was six. It's a six-foot fence. Everything was within compliance, but I have had no, nothing, nothing growing. I mean, anybody no, could walk through my building. I have no commercial kitchen. I have a certified kitchen at my house. I have two certified kitchens in Sanford, so I can do my baking. Um, I don't know. We had to realter our what we were going to do because of the first denial. I liquidated my my construction company. I do own another construction company that has nothing to do with that property. Uh, a business partner who owns and we operate out of his location. Um, so we've gone above and beyond. We've I've taken my right away of growing to appease the town. When legally you do not have to give up your rights medically when you are a medical patient in need. We've had everybody come through our, t uh, our house. I've invited the police to come through my house to show them how we separated our whole thing. We have locks on every door, digital locks on every door. We Everything is safeguarded. We have camera system. We have security. And honestly, we're here today because not I don't think we're here today because of what I do. I think it's because of a lack of communication. And if my neighbors would have been like any other neighbors and said, hey, can we have a cup of coffee and talk about this? You, they could come through my building and see that I'm a mother too. And I have children too. And safety is number one. And it will be number one. And it, it, that will never change. Again, we'll get down to really, we just got to look at what 
Yep. What the words say and, and what we're so, allowed to approve. And so just approve. to justify that letter that she read is okay. null and void. Great. Thank you. Thank you. In your in your mission statement, you you refer to that your services are from seed to, to sale. huh to sale to yes sale. to sale yes um, and assume then that means that you're growing marijuana that means that all the marijuana that I grew within my basement I kept that and that was on reserve until I opened stash and that's what I've been operating from since then. Caregivers can operate with caregivers, but I still have a reserve. I'm not, I'm not kind farms and I'm not green truck and I'm not even the house on the corner over here. That's eventually that's what you want to be up. I would love to be that, but that would no, never no, be I'm, up I'm not my home. That. I meant you, you want to be up growing. Absolutely. Elevating what Absolutely. you're saying. Absolutely. That's what I need to do to provide for my right. family. Okay. Great, thank you. Can I sit? I think for a second. Thank you. <laughs> I think let's move on to the code officer and get a synopsis on what happened. You have frozen again. Please refresh. Okay. I'm Again, you have frozen. Just a second, I can go get a wait. Sure. And we're almost can we all we're remove back. our names? We're back. Are we good? <laughs> I guess that's what James says. James, the. Perfect. All right, Jennifer McCabe, Code Enforcement Officer for the Town of Berwick. I'm just going to give you a quick rundown on the last kind of year, year and a half, if you will, so you guys have a better understanding from our point of view, the town. Right. Um, so. I was not the code enforcement officer when this application originally came in. Um, his name is Dan Vincent. Um, when this application came in, it wasn't approved right away. And it wasn't approved right away on the basis of we thought there was a commercial business going in there. Um, we reached out to Mr. Roy and asked him if it was indeed a commercial business. We were aware at the time that he had Stone Age Stoneworks. Um, we knew it because it was the Homock, because they sponsored youth, youth teams in our community. She's right about that. She's been a coach in our community. Um, they've given back, you know. Um, so when asked, they said no. It was um, for them to store, at the time they told Dan it was to store ATVs and other things from the house. Um, so we went ahead and approved it. Unfortunately, Dan left right as it was getting approved. Um, so it was approved. It was approved as an extension to their garage. Um, we had the knowledge of it being a garage setting. Um, there was a door that was on the side of the plan. Um, we, we at the time were not aware that it was not going to be a garage door. Um, so that's where the town stands with that. For code enforcement, it really comes down to whether the building complies with the IBC 2015 code or not. Um, so as they were building it, inspections were done on this property. Um, I went out to do a framing inspection where they had begun insulating at the time. Um, and I had questions about all of the electricity going into this building. Um, the state electrical inspector, Brian LaFlame, um, brought it to the town's knowledge too that this was an 800 amp service that was going in and that he guided us on. Um, he told us that we should not um, let CMP energize this building until we could take a walkthrough. Um, that walkthrough never happened. Um, we reached out to Mr. Roy, he told us that he would change the amp service um, down to, I think it was 100 amp service. That's what we were told at the time, something like that. Um, I can't remember, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it was a 600 amp service that he um, said he would go down to. We would approve his application and pretty much move on. So anyways, it, it, in Berwick, the code enforcement officer does not oversee any electrical um, inspections, electrical permits. Um, but we do keep, you know, in line with what the state is telling us. So Brian the Flame, he's, you know, he tells us and then we kind of go from there. So 
moving on from that, um, Stash Incorporated came to us. So Matt Roy came to us and he wanted to, um, we were talking about it. We had a lot of neighbor complaints about growing in that house. And at the time, what he's talking about is um, we thought that Jess was just a caregiver at that time. Um, we had no knowledge of there being a website, it being a real home auk business um, all over Berwick right now. We are, you know, all over Berwick right now. People are growing in their houses under caregiver licenses and their attorney is correct. You know, we can't ask them certain questions um, about it. I can tell you that I spoke to, it's confusing because I spoke to Matt a few times um, and I've, I've reached out to Phil and Phil can speak to this because it just felt like we were never really getting the whole story about what was happening there. And I just kept saying, there's more to this story. We have to figure this out. So anyways, um, staffing, staffing Stash Incorporated um, is not allowed employees. They're not allowed to have instructors instruction there under our land use ordinance um they it was permitted as an extension to their garage um we obviously um when the application came through we didn't ask if we had no knowledge of just being a caregiver at that point the town is not privy to that information we're never going to be you know um just okay <laughs> um and what they're speaking to about Matt not being able to be a caregiver under the Town of Berwick's land use ordinance um, and our ordinances, um, that's considered a co-op and it's not allowed. Um, so that's what he was speaking to, just to let you know. Um, so anyways, then January comes and I reached out to Matt um, via the email address we had on file, which we later figured out that he didn't really look at anymore. He had a new one. Um, that I was, I just explained that I was going out on maternity leave and I would like to be able to take a walk through his building before I went out on maternity. Um, I went out on maternity leave on January 26th and when I returned five weeks later, um, the building had been, um, a certificate of occupancy had been granted on the building while I was out I believe the date of that was February 25th. February 25th? Anybody have that? Yes. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Um, it was the week before, but it was canceled because it wasn't completed. So anyways, Joe Roussel from South Baroque went out. He sealed the building, didn't find anything wrong with the building according to the IBC 2015 code. And he issued that certificate of occupancy when I was out of maternity leave. Um, and then, the next step of that was their home off business. We had talked to our town attorney um, several times just about like this address. Um, and so I came back, it was a Monday, and um, I came back that day. And unfortunately, <coughs> um, I was only working, I came back part time for the first week. I was back after five weeks of being out on maternity. and. Um, James had signed the home occupation permit um, and I, wa I was back but I was back on a part-time basis and I was like answering emails and phone calls at that time I wasn't doing inspections Joe Roussel was still doing inspections um, so that's where we are really as a town right now um, do you have any questions on that, any of that? So, I guess I'm a little bit confused on when it became a building to when it became a caregiver, a home occupancy. That's, I guess, where I'm missing the whole thing right now. So, so you want to know when it changed over from a Right, garage. I mean, it sounded like when you were talking about it, you had questions about the service and yet it was still just a building, it you know, was a, yeah. a storage building or something. And then it, they got a permit for a home occupancy. When did that all happen? How did that occur? So they, so the uh, building permit came in um, long before the home occupation um, permit was applied for. 
Um, we did deny one before, but the home occupation was permitted. James, do you have the date in front of you that it was permitted? Um, it'd I, be in the, the I have it. It's September 18th. No, the, in, the okay. initial. The building permit? The home occupation permit. Uh, that, it would have been a, about a month ago. 3 8 21. That's yeah, here. That's March 8th, too. I'm pretty sure this March, date. February so 25th. 3 8 21. February 25th, 2021? Yeah. March 8th. March 8th. 2021. And certificate of occupancy signed by Joe Rosell. The home occupation permit. So I, I feel like we need to state, I just want to, I just want to state before you guys um, can see it. It is signed by our um, planner, James Bellissimo, and unfortunately he cannot sign it. It has to be a um, code enforcement officer. Yes. Would that explain, I have a copy here of a certificate of occupancy and it's, you're you're listed as the code enforcement officer, but it's signed by Joseph Russo. Yeah, Joe Joe Russo uh, works in South Berwick. And I know he he's covering. I know he's the code enforcement officer in. He was covering for, for the town of Berwick as I was out on maternity leave for the uh, month of February. I can ask one uh, one other question. Sure. Uh, you know, this your your description of what happened uh, had some complexity to it from what I can hear. Sure. Um, mm -hmm. are, there, are there things that either you learned from this or that you would do differently? Uh, yes. There's definitely things that we would do differently as a town. Um, one of the things that moving forward that we've done, um, we've implemented is businesses like these, we have a lot more questions that we need to ask. Unfortunately, um, most of the people that come to us for a home off for this use, medical marijuana, um, they're very open with us and they tell us and they, they, they want to tell us everything and help us through and they, want, they just want to lay their cards out on the table, give us their security plan, give, her their, give us this odor, their odor control plan. Um, they really, really want to work with the town on that. It was very, very difficult for the town to sort through whether or not to issue, not to issue each permit because it, it was very difficult. It, it wasn't an easy process for 68 Ridland Road. Um, forgot that question. But, um, one of the things that Uh, let me let me think about that how I want to phrase that but uh, and I'll get back to you but I got I have another question sure yep uh, James could you come up for a minute sure because I'm still somehow we got staff caregiver on this whole opportunity permit thing so we went from a build I'm still lost on this went from a open a building to stash caregiver on top of this permit that was checked off that they met all the requirements and i've still lost on that process so we're in a, a building that has a certificate of occupancy okay so they come in for a home occupation application and at that point if it meets the home application standards that it's, permit, it's permitted through the permitting officer then it's do they have to get a separate permit for this yeah it's a home occupation permit so they this is what they applied for this i just want to let me just take a look for it yeah so that is the town of berwick's home occupation permit yeah and that's significant those, those are the guidelines that each okay she signed it there's other documents in this She's, she's listed, but it's somebody yeah. else signed it, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm assuming you went down through this list, I guess. Yeah, I can, I can stop from here. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I know what I want to ask now. Is that all right? Yeah, go ahead. Um, my concern 
about this uh, frontage business because uh, it seems to be part of the part of the issue that we need more information on. What is considered frontage? I can I can speak I can speak to that. I I, I can speak to that. Okay, let me just just, yeah. just give a scenario that um, if I were to call the Berwick police or the fire department for a good reason, and I told them that my address was 68 Ridlin Road. Would it be? Would it be in some kind of an assumption there that that's the frontage for that dwelling? Yeah. So the and the reason I ask obviously is this the question about yeah frontage on Route Four and Route Nine is in question. Right. So 8.25.2 says medical marijuana caregivers are allowed in every base zone, regardless of frontage. And section 8.25.3 are performance standards of conditional uses. So that's indicated on page 35 and 36 on, of the land use table. And on um, page 38, when it has a star next to the C, that indicates in Article 8, there's performance standards. So everything in 8.25.3 and below are performance standards for when they go to planning board. So that includes school setbacks, the neighborhood plans, the frontage of Route 4. Those are for a, a, a different use that's not an accessory marijuana use. You got that? Is that sort of? Well, I, mean, I, I think we've got to, I know. Did, did you just say something about someone having uh, a dressing odor and addressing security, the other yes. marijuana people so that come in, caregivers? Under home OC, uh, we don't necessarily require it. We require it under um, our commercial grow facilities. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just neighbor care care to say so they come in and they tell us their security plan we have them reach out to um, chief town and just let them know what they're doing there we also um, have them reach out to a chief plant um, so chief plant has an understanding if his guys show up to a place like 68 Redland Road they know what they're up against they know it's a grow facility they're not going in blind um, and they just kind of know the building layout of what's there so and again, I, I'm just going to state that a lot of these, you know, um, businesses that are fall under home OC, because there are a lot of them all over Berwick, um, a lot of them, they just lay their cards out on the table. So they, they reach out to Chief Plant, they reach out to Tim, you know, Chief Town. They give us an odor control plan. Um, they've, they've done all of their, like, back leg work by times they come to us for a home OC permit. And... I can tell you that this one was very difficult, like to maneuver and to find information and and because we just do everything based on facts, you know. Um, so when I talk to, let me just add to that. When I talk to Phil, um, which is our town attorney, you know, there were some questions that, you know, we would have, could have, would have um, asked. The Roy family, you know, um, whether or not they're extracting there, because those are complaints that have come in, whether or not they have their um, home kitchen, you know. You have frozen again. Please refresh. Thank you. That's right. I'm just we'll using the opportunity to try to understand what you're saying. Yeah. Back, I think. We are back. We're back. Yes. Okay. So when you have a um, home based kitchen like this that falls under home off business for medical marijuana, you have to be certified through the Department of Agriculture. Um, so we didn't really have, we didn't, we, these are all things that we needed to work through, you know. 
Um, and it, it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy for the town to maneuver this. Have you worked through it now? Um, I, I am, I don't know if they have a license through the department of agriculture, but I can tell you that, um, some un, un, anonymous calls had come in through the police department about 68 Ridland Road. Um, and there were some times where things were investigated and they were unfounded. So that I can say. They were unfounded. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. The, I, the 825 guidelines that we looked down through. Yeah. They don't apply for home occupancy. Is that what you're telling me? They do. They do. Do I have them in front of me? Hold on. So, I mean, I know that one of them specifically states that, uh, uh, you know, primary year round residents in, are allowed in every base zone. But then, I mean, there's a number of uh, odor control, security, performance standards, uh, all of those. I'm assuming once you have the permit, you still have to meet all of those requirements. Is of that course, right? Of course. Okay. Yeah. I just want to make sure I was clear on that because I mean, I, I was just thinking about, I mean, you can extract min, mine, you know, you can have a gravel pit, but that doesn't mean you don't follow the rules in the ordinance that say, once you have the permit, you still have to follow the rules in the ordinance. So Correct. anyone that's doing medical marijuana, or any marijuana industry is still going to fall under the guidelines of these. these Correct. Eight. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And again, most of the people that fall under home oc and I've frozen again. we're back we're back okay. are we good yep all right so ask that question one more time no i think i'm all set i think i answered you answered we're good question. yeah but okay. i know uh you wanted to speak oh yeah okay so i think we're all set thank sure. you and i'm going to take my mask off to make sure i'm clear yeah that was, that was a misstatement of your ordinance that is not correct um what i believe code enforcement was saying was that accessory use home occupation caregivers, others that she had dealt with voluntarily offered information about security and odor mitigation that is not required for a home occupation permit. Your requirements are on this permit. And so um, the kitchen at 68 Ridland has been certified by the Department of Agriculture. That's a simple question that if they asked would have gotten an answer about it. Um, no one's hiding anything at 68 Ridland. Like I said, we're on YouTube talking about everything going on at their house. But it is not the state of the ordinance in Berwick that the performance standards that fall below 8.25.3 apply to a marijuana caregiver. That is not correct. That is for commercial marijuana operations in Berwick. The, the state of your ordinance today is any medical marijuana caregivers primary year round residence in every base zone and every overlay zone subject to the performance standards on the home occupation permit period. So and a article, secure and, if sorry to interrupt and article seven and article seven, I haven't looked <laughs> whatever include, that is. And that I does include odor control. Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. But not that, but uh, that you submit a plan is not required. And if you want that to be required, that's great. Most towns do require something like that. You can certainly add it by changing your ordinance and adding it to this checklist. Right. But the permit was properly issued to Ms. Roy because she met all of the requirements on your, your home occupation permit. So the fact that other caregivers may have submitted, home caregivers may have submitted security plans and odor mitigation plans, <clears throat> that was voluntary. If there are questions by code about odor mitigation, which isn't relevant today because there's nothing growing, all they have to do is ask. I've been in the place. They have an HVAC system. They have plans for odor mitigation. Just talked about her security plans that she has in place. 
They are literally an open book. So any inference, any implication coming from code enforcement is just not correct and not appropriate. And her characterization well, Just a of, second. I, I think she's just speaking that that's the impression that she had. So, I mean, I don't think you can put you're right words in her mouth i mean that's she didn't she just said that when she was working with them that was her impression so i think we want to stop casting stones on both sides here okay? well correct i agree and i think a lot of stones have been cast and i think we've patiently sat and taken a lot of it but a lot of it is mischaracterizations as she she said at the beginning there were police reports but then never bothered to say they were unfounded until just a minute ago we so kept all of that we understand we're, we're that there's some pushback on this use but they are in compliance with berwick's ordinance and so of and, course and that's what we're here to decide if you want the ordinance to be different you can change it but they're in compliance today thank you yes i did address the order issue I put in an email to her that we were going to use scrubbers. I did tell her that we were going to have security. At first, we were still growing in our basement. My basement is all wired up to grow in the basement. Made it safer for my family to move it to the new construction. That's why we went from 400 amp. The electrician said, when we put in 800, I was like, do you need a parent permit for that? He addressed it with the state. The state came in. They did the inspection. You weren't there. I was compliant. I've talked to everybody I've had to. We've gotten every single permit we've had to. We've even had OMP called in from the town. And we were told by them that it was the town that had called. But we were told by the town that the OMP had called them. So I don't know what's going around and whatever it is. But I have made every due diligence to have every single permit to abide by the HIPAA laws that protect us. So it is, if anybody knows HIPAA laws, any nurse that would know a HIPAA law, any doctor says that we don't have to talk about our business. The expansion on my, my building looks exactly like my house. It's the same color. I could have done a greenhouse. I could have done anything. I could have had a shack like half of the grows in this town. I beautified the, the area. I just had an appraisal on my house. I've increased the value of my house by almost $300,000, which helps the neighborhood. I put in almost $100,000 worth of landscaping. I mean, I don't know. I, I'm doing my due diligence. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Just a second. I think I had a question over here. We have also appraised our house to be refinanced, and we were told by the appraiser that the value of our home went down by $50,000 because of the house across the street. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Chair, um, when I stated about the odor control, I just want to put it on record and um, spoke about the odor control in the security plan. I was simply answering Pat, um, Mrs. Bovert, asking me what we would change in the future going forward. And I understand. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, um, we've heard a lot, and I think we're, if your heads are any more spinning than mine, uh, then, uh, or less, then I, I'm happy for you, because I'm trying to take all of this in. Um, do we need to hear any more comments or any more, uh, have any more questions answered at this point in time? I, I have a couple things. Um, I was concerned about um, the home occupation, the fact that you have two locations. We don't have one location. Well, what about the one in uh, Northern Maine? Northern Maine. No, that's a delivery that's a service. Delivery service. That's could you step, every... sorry, could you step oh, up? So the... We're allowed to deliver from the tip of Maine to Kittery. It doesn't matter where it is. There is no other location in Northern Maine. Okay. We offer a delivery service because we're both from Fort Kent, Maine, the Canadian border. <laughs> so naturally that's where we grew up and we have a, an incredible amount of patience there actually. And it requires us to take pre-orders and we bring them up directly to every patient's house every three weeks. I start here in Berwick, Maine, and I do an, uh, 
just about every town stop. Ooh. It takes us the better course of three days worth of work before he can come back home and we have serviced everyone. There is no other location. Okay. Our patients okay. know us as Stash North when we're going north. Thank you. And the other thing is, is yeah, I leave at two in the morning. Because okay. that's the only way to get to Fort Kent, which is six and a half hours away, then to start an 11 and a half hour shift. Uh, did you have another question? Hey, um, I'm looking. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> uh, Anyone else have any questions or pets? So, Jenny, you had said about the signature on the permit, right? Where James was filling it at the time, whatnot, but that makes it, and you said it's invalid. Well, it, it makes it invalid until uh, they come back in and sign. Um, our attorney gave us some advice for them to come they. in and just rehab it issues. They, okay, they'll yeah. come back in, see you, and you'll sign it. That's what you're saying? That's what our town attorney has advised. Okay, so once, once you do that, then this will be good. At the moment, it's not. It doesn't, doesn't matter right now until there's the one that you sign. Okay. Okay. Fine. We and did. James and I did issue a letter. I don't know if he, you saw the letter. It was in the packet. Mm -hmm. So was that public? Uh, yeah, everything's public. Do you have a copy of it? Did we get it? I'm just asking because she's asking. I didn't send it to you directly, but it's on the, it's on, I'll, I'll email it to you tomorrow. The letter did say to why James signed it. Okay. Yeah. You have a. Um, we, um, we did, I would like to say though that my lawyer, I would like to say that even though you're pulling things out now, my lawyer has asked for all of the information and clearly has not received all of the information. And she can attest to that, can't she? Sure. I mean, I don't. I mean, I'm... you know, I emailed with James um, and asked for everything related to this permit, and I got the one page permit. I was a bit surprised to see everything that was in the agenda packet today. The letter you're referring to, I would love it if you would send me a copy it when you have a chance. You have I, it? I didn't, uh, I didn't see it in your packet. You guys have it in your packet? <clears throat> what is it saying? It was only a it's paragraph, I believe. Right? Signed by James. It was a short. No. Yeah. I don't, I don't think so. It was only a paragraph or so. Right here. I didn't Just a paragraph, it. James, right? Yeah. Sure. Yep. Oh, the little, the little one? Mm -hmm. So what is the status of this permit? <clears throat> Are they in non-compliance? What's that? Uh, Are they in non-compliance right now? They don't have a valid permit? Am I, I'm just trying to get my hand head back around this. Yeah, I have another question about uh, uh, the, the town of Berwick certificate of association is made out to both of them. And you said it can't be made out to both of them or they are a cooperative. We both own. We, I think she's addressing sorry. James. Yeah, I mean, in terms of um, cooperative, I mean, that is tied to the number of plants. So when they can't, they're not allowed to combine their license to, in effect, double the flowering, the double the, double the, but, if they combine their medical licenses to combine the double the plants they can grow, that's not allowed. Okay, but he's not, he's not. Um, that's in our, that's in our he, ordinance. But, but he is not a caregiver. Yes, I am. Oh, I, I thought it could be. Going. I oh, I thought at the caregiver. beginning you said that one of you was and one of you wasn't now. Yes, we were both caregivers. I haven't given up my caregiver license. Okay. I am not, I'm choosing not to grow to okay. appease the town. Okay, so it's okay that you go both are on this um, certificate of association. Yes, well, that's our corporation. That's how we pay our taxes. That's how we pay our sales tax. Okay, so our that's all in order then. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> hey, Rick, just a... Um, we have uh, someone's raising their hand in the Zoom room. I don't know if you want to entertain any more discussion. That's totally that's that's public. Is are they a player in all of this? That would be it would be general. That would be general public discussion. We're not certainly at that point yet. Okay. I think we're still trying to get through the three the three people or the three parties. So we're trying to be clear that right now there's no there's no permit right now. 
follow up on that. So right now there's no, there isn't, a, there isn't one right now. Isn't one what? There's no, there's no permit at the moment. We have been advised by our town attorney, Phil, and he can speak to it if you okay. guys want um, for the Royce to come back in right. and um, sign a new document. Okay. Well, let's see. It's one of the like main precursors to, you know, it's you have to have one to, 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 to go against. Right. So how, how do we say there's an invalid or it wasn't? There isn't one. Wasn't one there. This is invalid. It's not, you know. Phil, do you want to speak hmm. to this? Yeah, that would probably be a good yeah, idea. Yeah, it's a little different from what you're saying, but I'll, I'll sort of, uh, so I, I wasn't involved in the issuance of the permit, so I just make that clear for the record. That's why I'm able to represent the board here. Um, James James uh, reviewed the permit and issued it. Um, I'm looking at the letter that's in the packet that you're referring to now, April 12th, and what it says specifically is that on March 8th, the town granted the Roy's a home occupation permit after review, the 8.2 standards were met, were found to be met as of March 8th. Please see permit occupation attached. And in conclusion, the town of Berwick issued the home occupation permit on the criteria attached to this letter. So as drafted, it, see, um, it seems to suggest, and correct me if I'm wrong, Dan, that you're saying even though you didn't sign it, you agreed to it. You agreed that it is met. Is that true? Is that what you're saying in the letter? That is what the letter states. Correct. Okay. Um, so um, this is a little complicated and it's an interesting question. I, and I hate to uh, delay anything, but I, I, I think there's a good question being raised now, which is if, if the code officer has not actually signed the permit, but she is saying that she agrees with it. So we'll likely issue it. Um, then under your ordinance, the code officer is the one that has to sign permit applications. That's that's in the permit section of your ordinance. Okay. So at this point, it sounds like there is no code officer issued permit. Um, what you could do, and, and again, I hate to delay it, but you could continue this meeting and um, and if the code officer does, it reviews it and signs it, then you would have a permit to actually review at the next meeting. The reason why I suggest that is because um, someone could raise a question, and, and I'd like to hear from uh, the, the two parties, but raise a question that if, if for example, you upheld the, the quote permit that's uh, been appealed now or, or overturned it, um, there could be an argument in the future that, that was it was invalid anyway, and so there was nothing to uphold or overturn. So um, one thing you could do is wait for the actual permit. Once the, uh, assuming that, assuming Jen issues it, maybe she won't, you know, I, I don't want to presume, but based on the April 12th letter, and then you have an actual permit that then you can apply this appeal to. That's a suggestion I have. I know, I know you've taken some time hearing arguments and so it's, it right. may be frustrating for people, but it technically, um, well, it may be better to actually have a, an actual per, uh, permit in front of you to deal with. I think I'm going, to, I'm going to follow up on that because it was part of the discussion that when we were going to have the discussion, I wanted to go over this part of the ordinance anyway. Uh, it's on page 122. Concurring vote. This is a decision by the Board of Appeals. The concurring vote of the majority of the members of the board shall be necessary to reverse any order, requirement, decision, or determination by the code enforcement officer. We can't reverse anything we can't we don't have anything right now to reverse to reverse so i i think i agree 100 percent with what you're saying is i can't sit up here and follow the ordinance when i don't have a valid permit to revoke or to to decide upon i i don't know i'm not a lawyer i'm just that's what the words say and i don't have a code officer anything right now to overturn or to decide upon. Am right. I misreading that? No, that's that's a good reading of it. And I one suggestion I have is again, um, you could continue this meeting instead of con instead of um, concluding it and reconvene after a decision after the the permit is actually issued, assuming that it is based on the the letter and the record. I, I yeah, I, I yeah. think I to, will. Uh, yeah. Um, offer a is there a motion to convene this meeting right now to continue the meeting to another date until we right. have 
the proper uh, paperwork in front of us to act upon. Is there a motion? So moved. Is a so uh, is there a second? I'd say it's worth having uh, some maybe some more comments to avoid. If, if if anyone has anything left to get out now, so we can think about it or figure, so it doesn't come up at the next meeting. It's a lot of time, no, from, you know. From, excuse me. From a public standpoint, if you delay this meeting now, that is just going to allow people to, shall I say, get more ammunition or change their story or change their website when Listen, it is already no. Ma'am, ma'am. Is that who? Okay. I, I understand what you're trying to tell me, but I believe that I'm very comfortable in the fact that right now we've got words that we have to go by that we can't fulfill the obligation of this, uh, this ordinance. And I agree with, uh, with Ashton that um, what I want to do is put the motion on the table and then we'll offer a discussion. So any further discussion that we want to hear, and then once there's no more discussion, we'll vote on the motion that was seconded if someone seconds the motion. Okay. So reconvene so, once this. So, right. So we've got right now a motion on the table for a continuance of this meeting until we get proper documentation on the permit that we're supposed to be seeing. There's a second, uh, there's, a, there's a motion, is there a second? Yes, sir. Okay, there's a second. So now, is there any further discussion out there before we continue this meeting? Does someone have something that they want to say right now? If you, yes, if you want, just one second. Please. Yes. So say this permit is granted once again, but if you go by the 8.25 adult use in medical marijuana, which they're stating they are, the location, the 8.25.3, they are allowed in R3 zoning, which Ridland Road is, on properties which have frontage on Route 9 and Route 4. Okay, well, we, okay, we're going to, like I say, it's not in our ballpark right now to, to understand, I mean, we can take that back under advisement once we have a permit to, to look at. But right now, I think it's going to go back to the town to go through the process again. I don't know if it's just a formal signature. I don't know what's going to be required because I'm not a code officer. I'm not part of the town. Is that what's required, guys? Just to come in and have this? Well, just there? a second. Wait, it's through me. Um, I think I did have... Was there someone out there that had some comment that wasn't a public? No, they're both yes. public, but I would encourage them to just send an email and then we'll put it on the public record. And or, or, you know, I can circulate it through the board. If, if you're not in a butter or anything at this point in time, I, I just don't feel like going sir, down the are, public comment is going to is just going to do anything to benefit our understanding of this yeah, problem. So these are our butters, but I think at this point, We've heard everything we need to hear. Half, nope. You guys will have time to speak at the. I okay. I have Start one thing. I, I have okay. one thing that I'm. Can you guys address her concern? It's it doesn't apply. Well, then why don't you explain? Well, that's it. not explain their fault. That that was me. I I yeah. I just I just I, I don't want them to keep thinking that that that's. Okay, so what was your question? She's it's about the route four and route nine front. It's it's allowed in every base zone, so it does not apply. I, I know, but you know, they don't seem to understand that. Do, do you that? So uh, that's all. I'm just looking to so that they don't I worry about but that if they. I don't know. How, I'm not sure how to. Yeah, that's fine. I have a question uh, for Jennifer. Um, <clears throat> Do we have a written statement from the Burr chief of police or his designee that the department has reviewed the measures and if they have any recommendations? Okay. So this may be a good opportunity if we're talking about revising the permit or going through some of that process again. I'm wondering if we have that already or well, where is the fact that? fact that you'll get that because that is indicated here. 
that would be up to the Roy's to obtain that from Dennis Plant, chief of fire. So that's not a town concern? No, but um, that doesn't really fall under our home occupation. The reason I ask is that it talks about having the police chief yeah. have an opportunity for some suggestions. Now that could involve traffic. It could involve a lot of different things. I don't know, but that's part of under 825.5 security. Uh, prior to granting approval, the planning and or court code enforcement department shall receive a written statement from the Berwick chief of police or designee that has department has reviewed the measures and if they have any recommendations. What that means, I'm not, you know. I don't know either. So, yeah, can you help? I think that's yeah. all. But that's, we're going to, again, that's why it's going back to where it, it, it needs to go so that when this board gets back, we can ask those questions and we'll know the answers to those. Yeah, correct. But they're right. It does not apply to a home occupation um, permit. permit for this. All right. Um, I do want just to make sure that the Roy's, the lawyer has any comments or questions that you want to make. I, I don't think we're even in the proper stage of this. I don't think when you close the discussion, it's only supposed to be between the board. But at the same time, I don't want to leave this meeting and not have questions answered that might need to be answered. <laughs> Could I just ask a question about the logistics of this meeting? Excuse me? I was just wondering if I might be able to ask a question about the logistics of this meeting, the invitees, who's who's invited to the appeals process? Well, it's just to say, we, I'll let you ask your question in just a second. Thank you. Well, I think initially my question was going to be for the town attorney, if this is a de novo review of a permit and you all are ultimately deciding whether or not the permit was properly issued, I guess, why would it need to be reset? But I, I'm going to defer to your judgment on, on this and, the and what the town attorney is saying. If it's, uh, yeah, I, but this was news to us. I certainly reached out to the town and was never told about this April 12th letter. So we certainly could have potentially identified this issue before tonight and rectified this before tonight. Um, that would be my only comment. Okay. Um, I agree. The, the person that's speaking, um, what was that question again? Uh, I'm sorry, this is Jeff Schaff, um, a budding neighbor. I was just curious about the um, selection process of, you know, folks who were invited to this meeting. Uh, I'm, sure that it, I'm sure it had to, the ordinance requires that it has to be uh, advertised in a, a newspaper so many days ahead of time. I'm, I, I'll defer to James. I'm, I hope yeah. we did. Yeah. The, the, correct. Yeah. 200 feet. 200 okay. feet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so I spoke to, you know, the nine members of the association and only two of them were invited to this uh, public appeal. So I'm just, I want to make sure that we're good as far as the uh, audience of, of what we're trying to achieve here is because uh, I, my neighbor was not invited and he's well within that 200 feet. It, it's, we do our best to notify people within the rules that are set up in the ordinance and publicly, uh, you know, through newspapers. And I'm sure word of mouth, this is a public hearing. So anyone's invited to a public hearing. It's not invitation only. It's just that we do try to inform anyone that's in cl close proximity so that they are aware that it's going on. We do advertise it in Newspapers, so people are the public's aware. We unfortunately don't have. I was on the board of selectmen. I well understand that we don't have a a newspaper that really gets to the public in Berwick. It, it's just a difficult task for us to try to inform people. Completely understand. I see. Have tried to do that. Make sure that we have the appropriate audience here to represent the concerns. Right. Thank you. Okay. I believe, and now I'm going to close it to this this board. Are you comfortable where we're at right now? We, we, we've basically got a motion on the table. We're, we're going to continue it. Um, do we have all the information we need? It's going back, as I understand right now, 
to the town, the town to figure out basically, and I'm not trying to give the town a hard time, but we want something official mm -hmm. sitting on this desk mm -hmm. that we can act on. Mm -hmm. And right now we don't feel like we have it. That's why we're continuing this to send it back to the town. Are we okay with that on, on this board right now? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So all in favor of continuing this meeting until a further time, until we have some information and we will get to the public and let them know. Yes. All in favor? In favor. Okay. So the meeting is adjourned at this point in time. And I apologize for any misunderstanding. It certainly, I will blame some of it on myself. Brand new, we got three brand new people on this board. <laughs> we, we're we're going to do our best to try to work our way through this and come up with a, an answer that hopefully, probably no one's going to be happy with, but legally the best we can do with the situation that's been presented to us. Okay, thank you. Thank you.